been running research, ultimately trying to get into the psyche of these business leaders and ultimately what's helping and hindering. What is it at the moment, Nicola? That's a great question. Uh, a lot of the challenges are not surprisingly around access to capital, but we found some very interesting and unique perspectives that emerged in the lived experience of our women entrepreneurs in America. Um, things that are not always uh, well talked about, such as the importance of paying oneself. You know, we have a large amount of disparities with our women entrepreneurs, including rating higher than average in the U.S. around food insecurity and the worry of being able to make it to cash flow break even, which right now is taking about eight years for our women entrepreneurs. But the importance of realizing if they actually pay themselves, it's the fastest indicator of getting them to cash flow break even. The problem is we don't talk about the importance of paying oneself. So this emerging research is identifying some of the mythologies and challenges that we need to get away from and start to really address at a core kernel of what is going to bring vibrancy and opportunity to our new majority of business owners in this country. Uh, Nicola, you are, to all intents and purposes, a not-for-profit right. that wants to help entrepreneurs, or in other words, founders, get going. That's right. And carrying on from our last conversation, one of the stories of this year was the thousands of people that lost their jobs at very big technology companies suddenly having some time on their hands mm. and being able to start new companies. Is that reflected in, in what you see day to day? Yes, actually, it's really interesting. Some of the things that we didn't expect to see was the idea that it takes a little bit of age to find opportunity when it comes to entrepreneurship. You mean being literally older? Quite literally older. More experience. Exactly, okay. exactly. There is a, a reverse correlation right now of if our business owners are between 40 to 49, they have the highest chances of success in this country, which is really interesting when we think about the typical environment of thinking, oh, you got to be 18, straight out of college, no problems, no challenges to think of, no worries in the world. But it's actually quite the opposite. Our most successful business owners are our ones that have typically 10 to 20 years of work experience behind them. And I think that's yeah. really exciting when we imagine what's possible by looking at a new appreciation of intellectual currency that's being missed in this country right now. And Nicola, what's interesting is you also say those that basically get to success, break even quicker, pay themselves, value themselves. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and again, I think that's not often talked about, right? You say, go all in. Uh, don't pay yourself. Wait for that payday that is eventually going to come at some point in the ever possible future. But the challenge of what we find there is that we lose so much market value in that. And it actually impedes the ability for our business owners, especially our women business owners, to be successful. You know, this is the culmination of two years of work that was funded by Wells Fargo Foundation. And were it not for these eight 860 women that took us behind the scenes that helped us see things differently around what really drives success in community entrepreneurs and in the rise of high-tech entrepreneurs, we would never have been able to discover this. It's been one of the reasons we've been so uh, inspired to be able to share this research, obviously on a national stage, including most recently being cited in the annual SEC report on recommendations to Congress.